Hey, film friends, I'm Nick Furman. This is Furman on Film, a podcast where we break down movies with some of my closest friends and special guests. This week, we tackle the latest entry into the growing precarious game night horror canon. It's Mafia on Speed. This is It's What's Inside. Well, guys, today I have a very special guest. Adam Klein is the behind the screens columnist for Love is Moving magazine, exploring the power of story through faith, film, and pop culture in his native Canadian context. He and I have been podcasting slash Zooming together off and on for the past few years. And I've got to say it because he's here. It was his best of movie lists and DVD rack in our college dorm. Shout out physical media. That became the Pandora's box of my filmic obsession. My very own Mr. Miyagi. I know him as the Kleiner. It's Adam Klein. <laughs> oh, Welcome. man. Welcome, man. Oh, man. Thank you. That was uh, <laughs> overly generous, but also brought back all the the, the, the nostalgic feels, man. Because uh, yeah. we, we go way back, and I'm just, uh, I'm so grateful to be on the, the film bro journey with you. So That's right. Film bros for life. Oh, man. Oh, my gosh. We've been trying to do this forever, man. We were talking about, I can't yeah. even remember, since like De Palma's last film, I think. <laughs> oh, my word. So many. Uh, so, so yeah, I just, hey, we got a lot to get to, guys. We're going to, we might hit some spoilers a little bit, but we're going to try and stay out of the weeds, um, go big picture here. So I just wanted to start, Kleiner, by giving you, kind of giving you the floor a little bit, just a little clear okay. out from me. So you could tell us everything from a little about yourself, some of your projects you've been working on. Then I just want kind of your first impressions of the film, maybe where you first heard about it, how it struck you, your viewing experience, you know, um, and we can get into kind of loosely what it's about too, like the the plot details. So I'm gonna okay. I'm gonna let you launch. Well, okay, I, I won't. You did such a beautiful job with the bio. I won't say much more other than. You know, I'm I'm grateful that we've been longtime friends, going to college together, and uh, I mean, sh we shared many many things, but movies was a was a a growing conversation, and it was. I mean, we we can only be grateful for film because that was the thing actually kept you and I in touch. That's uh, true through yeah. social media through through those years when we were just finding our way in life and family and jobs and all these kinds of things and ministry. And uh, so, yeah, I, I, but I, as you mentioned, I, I'm here in Canada. I'm based out of Belleville, Ontario, which is two hours east of Toronto. And um, I, I mean, I've been doing the amateur uh, video production, filmmaking, film criticism thing. I've been doing it since high school. Yeah. Uh, I, I started writing down film reviews uh, back in the, the high school library and just mass before mass emailing was a thing i just mass emailed all my friends you know a list of i don't even know what it was let's say 20 or 30 names and a big man at the movies i just put the subtitles big man at the movies nice yes. and, and i would just email email but blast my friends in high school uh my thoughts on movies i had seen and then that evolved and developed over the years uh I, I always give a credit. I always give inspiration to the to uh, Roger Ebert being, of course, the legend. Um, you know, I had you know, I, I'm a I'm a pastor. I'm a communicator and a writer and all these things. But I always point to Roger Ebert as the man who influenced me most as a communicator, because from early on, you know, again, like elementary school days of sitting in front of the big box TV and watching Siskel and Ebert. Those are formative memories for me. Yeah. Yeah. Of, of what it means to watch a film and engage in the medium of, of cinema. Um, and and in, in his later years, Roger Ebert, his writing, his prolific writing of many topics, um, his yeah. he, he was one of like the first like famous bloggers. Um, his stuff again, like had monumental influence on my life and my communication. So, anyways, what uh, a bit of a, pl a blast of random things from my bio, but there you go. Um, it's what's inside, right? It's That's what's it, inside. It, talk about being a writer grammatically. That the title trips me up every time. <laughs> two different what's apostrophes, inside? right, Nick? I know. I was like, come, ooh, <laughs> oh, how did I get past two, the editor? It's two grammatical nerds here. Like it's just yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> uh, but I love it. So uh, my introduction, and it's very, very short and simple. I remember the the bizarre phrase. What I think is bizarre. It's what's inside being mentioned on at least two of my favorite regular podcasts. Yep, movie podcasts. 
right. back in January during Sundance. I remember taking note, just mental note, of two trusted voices, film critics, just saying, I saw What's Inside at Sundance, or I've heard great things out of Sundance about what's right. So, you know, I just made a mental note. Okay, well, that that's exciting to see what will come. And my vague memory of it was, you know, even your introduction, um, I, I'm curious, we, we can talk about it shortly, but I was like, I wasn't sure, is it a horror? Is it a thriller? Is right. it a, a black comedy? And I don't know. Um, and honestly, um, all these months later, uh, now, now we're recording this early October, and I'm like, uh, I had, when I went to turn it on, on Netflix this weekend, I didn't, I had bl almost a blank slate other yeah. than knowing it was recommended. Right. I honestly didn't know what I was about to watch, right. which is, right. is for the record. It, that's definitely my preferred way to, to engage with a film is know as little as possible. Agreed. Um, and so, uh, yeah, I really, so I, again, this sort of like this vague notion in my mind that it might be a horror film. Um, and I, I would argue it's not, no, uh, and, not and actually really. just, just having listened to the director, uh, on a podcast, he 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 actually confessed that he's baffled why people keep calling it a horror <laughs> because he never pitched it as a horror. Yeah. Um, he said he said it was a sci-fi thriller with a right. bunch of jokes. Yeah, that's true. Um, and um, I think anyway, so th that was my vague introduction. Just knew it was something to catch later in the year when it finally found a distributor, and and then the joy the the joy because I, I I always want movies to be amazing. I always want to be blown away. Right. And I mean, it can be fun to to pick apart a film that infuriates you and yeah. just, you know, baffles you. That that that's a different kind of fun. But I genuinely anytime I hit play in a movie or buy a, a movie ticket, I I want to be blown away and I I I honestly was blown away cuz I had no expectations. Yeah. Um yeah. and so I it, it's what's inside is probably in my no, guaranteed to be in my top 15, probably my top 10 of the year. Ooh, look at that. Strong recommendation out of the gate. I love it, man. That's, uh, yeah, that's it. I did the same thing. There's always like a January report from Sundance in the pods. And I remember that one coming out as a, yeah, just look out for this thing. I think even at the time it was mentioned as horror. Uh, but I think you're right to hit the sci fi. There's definitely a sci fi element there. Mm -hmm. um, anyway, so. Um, but yeah, so I anticipated it. I forgot about it. And then it's yeah. like, it's on Netflix. And I was like, okay, we got to do this thing. So, um, okay. So plot, let's think, I guess, you know, man, there's that age old question about plot versus story, right? Like yeah. plots, what happens, right. the details, story is what the film is really about sort of thematically. Mm -hmm. yep. So I think plot wise, this is a movie, uh, about a group of college friends who get back together the night before a wedding at the groom's mom's mansion. Mm -hmm. And then this guest who has kind of a sordid history with the people in the room shows up with a mysterious briefcase and says, want to play a game? Basically. I mean, it's basically what he says. So, I mean, we're probably going to get to some spoilers shortly, but I mean, that pitch itself is like, you, yes. you only hope it's going to be amazing after that pitch. Yeah. And that's right? just it. Right. There's so many inspirational genre influences. Like, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's so exciting. Well, so, and I also think, you know, like high concept, right? So now we hit high yeah. concept. And that's probably, I'm going to argue later that there's all kinds of ways we could have delivered on this high concept. But I would say that, like, that that's what horror has going for it. Thrillers have going for it is like, oh, I'm in. Like the elevator pitch is beautiful. So yeah. Yeah. Um, we're probably going to get to some spoilers shortly. But if you don't even want one more detail spoiled about the game, then yeah. fast forward. They should not be listening or watching it. Yeah, it, yeah, you, yeah. It's too good. It, it's yeah. what's inside. If you haven't seen it, right. please please come back. Please yeah, come, come back. Come back, or I'm gonna give you just one little detail. So go back, go forward like 30 seconds to a minute. So for the rest of you, if you're still here, okay, here's the thing. A lot of us played mafia. Okay. Mm -hmm. Like, man, I can remember playing a bunch in college. So I don't remember yeah. if you and I ever played together. Mafia, but I do. werewolf, whatever you call yeah, it. Werewolf, yeah, werewolf, whatever you got. Um, so this is like mafia, except souped up sci-fi because when the game starts, this is the little spoiler, the character's minds actually enter another person's body <laughs> in the circle of wherever they're connected. So we got a body swapping thriller on our hands, Kleiner. Like that's what we're talking about. That's the plot. Um, 
Do you <laughs> want to hazard any kind of thoughts about what the story is? Like where what's what this really is about? I've got some I can tease out, but I wanted to give you kind of a thought about, you know, what's this yeah. thing really probing at? Well, and it, it's funny because not coming like I again, I hope people, if they need to hear a synopsis and not just a recommendation, just to hear the the sort of like a body swap movie you've never seen before yeah i hope that's, that's it. i hope that i hope that's enough for people to to tap in again i press play not even knowing it was a body swap movie yeah me too so and yeah. so therefore the first 15 minutes i i was super engaged but also super analytical about like what is this what are all the cues and um sure. and so story versus plot um the first 15 minutes I was really interested in taking mental notes of the story elements like, oh, it's going to explore the democratization of celebrity and fandom and, and social anxiety right. and because um, the medication and, and, re and relationship uh, tensions and inability to communicate interpersonal communication like in the first 15 minutes, it just it's actually firing a lot of themes at you, a lot of story right. elements right. at you. And right. it, it and it's and it's moving with such momentum that it it's like it's exciting because you're just like oh man that like what this can become is so many different things right and then I would probably argue and this is maybe maybe where there's some fair criticism mm -hmm. is that after the 15 minute mark once the guy enters with the suitcase which who doesn't love a suitcase entering the frame <laughs> like That's... then it becomes like almost all plot right because yeah. because there's so much. There's right. so much plot that you almost then don't have room for much characterization and story. And you you have, I mean, it's still there, but that, which makes, again, makes the setup, the 15 minutes where we actually are with people and getting to know them a little bit, the little bit of background history, um, so important, incredibly important. Because from there on out, it's an incredibly intricate, complicated, confusing True. Uh, yeah. plot. Yeah. Yeah. And to the point that, I mean, there were several moments where I, I tapped back 10 seconds or 20 right, seconds me too, actually. remote yeah. just to ca make sure I was catching what I was seeing or hearing. Right. And then, and even at the end, like, I mean, maybe you need a separate Furman on film like, explainer for the end. <laughs> because, I mean, I, I I know I definitely didn't get all of it. Yeah. But again, I was so thrilled that I didn't even care that I did not. Like, I'm just excited to watch it again so that I can grasp it. And there's also, again, there's, there's twists and turns that then demand a second viewing because then you can appreciate the nuances in the characters and the performances yeah. um, because, because the, there's just so much plot. Yeah, 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 I agree. But I think you hit it. I mean, what you started with, like the idea of, I mean, anytime you get these group think films, like the idea of personal identity, jealousy, old grudges, um, the openness and honesty of relationships or mm. lack thereof, that definitely comes to play. Even as the plot drives towards the third act, we get some of that cycling in. I mean, yeah, you said it first, man. Like there's there's commentary on the impact of on, our online presence, the tire, tireless pursuit of followers on Instagram, how our insecurities sink us. You know, it's about all about modern anxiety for desirability and success. So like that's the first like 10 minutes of this film is like so Gen Z ish. You're just like all of the yep. visually, like all of the stuff you're getting. Style, yeah. yeah. So I just want to read my favorite quote from the movie. And mm. I, I was proud of myself because I wrote it down when he first said it, but the filmmaker wanted it to make it very clear that it was the most important quote because he actually puts it back into the mouth of a character in the third act. Uh, but it's like, that I'm just going to read it. It says, it's like there's no drug that can compare with the high of being in someone else's body. Each new body you're going into is giving you another piece of the human condition until after a while you just want to constantly switch. So, hmm. yeah, there's kind of like a high in it, I guess. I don't know, man. Uh, we can kind of unpack that more if we want to. But, you know, I what I did mention to you off camera, like, I think the precarious game night movies with teens and these group dynamics has become like kind of fodder for horror film fun lately, which is why I think yeah. maybe this guy lumped in because, you know, you've got bodies, 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 which definitely resembles this in some ways. And I think talk to me has some touchstones too, the horror flick from last, the Australian flick. Yeah. So do you want to say anything about how that this one differs from those or kind of compare and contrast them? Um, I mean, again, there, there are so many, uh, there's so many intersections and influences um, 
And I, I'll, I will say too, just like listening to the interview with the filmmaker whose name is escaping me. I don't know if you have it in front of you. I think it's Greg Jardine yeah. or Greg Jardine. Something yeah, like that. Jardine. Um, I, I honestly just assumed he was a Gen Zer, but he's 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 us. He's in he's our age. He's yeah, our so age. I, I so actually, he's been, so he's been working at like he's been waiting almost twenty years to get a film off the ground. Wow. And and doing all these jobs and and again, but his background, what he's been doing in the meantime, compl- allowed him to be at the forefront of algorithms and social media and Gen Z technology, like all this stuff. And therefore, you you see it all on screen because you right, just right. the style the style choices. But yeah, so to that point. So we can we can look back because again, like in the first fifteen minutes, I got like Fight Club vibes, and then I got <laughs> like there's Tarantino vibes, and then yeah. um yeah, then I'm like, oh, this is uncut gems for Gen Z, like <laughs> um, but then yeah, but bodies, bodies, bodies came to my mind for sure. Yeah, and if anything, sort of in defense of um the story elements or the character elements, because again, there's so much plot, there's only so much time you can give to character that like bodies, 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 every character is an archetype and they, they do what they can. The, the Greg, the filmmaker, he does what he can to fill in the humanity of it, the background of it, to give us enough to care like in bodies, bodies, bodies. Um, but I would say probably in bodies where it becomes where those archetypal elements become more comedic as the film goes on in, right. in, in what's inside in this film. I, I actually think it becomes, well, here I'm. I'm gonna uh, be. I'm gonna contradict myself here. I think it maybe becomes a bit more horrific. Like, but, but in terms of like personality and psychology, right? Not actually a horror movie. It never becomes a horror movie. It gets darker. Um, but yeah. it, it gets. Thank you. Yeah, it gets darker. Yeah. It gets more deeply profound and thematic. I would argue because yeah. of the choices that are made in the and the the the, the intersections, the, the choices they have to. Um, because of where the big turns take place and therefore you're left of like, who will these characters end up being? Like, and I think that's actually one of the slogans, right? Like they'll never, they'll, they'll never leave the same person or something like that, which is fun. Um, but just th- there becomes this very serious, um, again, not, it's not overly thematic and analytical, but it just becomes for the characters. It becomes this very, um, yeah, dire and dark and serious choice of who will they be moving forward yeah fair yeah and i think what i picked up was i mean it's really interesting you said he was a millennial because i didn't like Mm -hmm. because are you yeah like like us right then elder millennial i because i think that like bodies 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 is completely mocking gen z right? right and this this is the gen z trappings are there visually but it's actually a lot more of like a millennial audience on things like you know, romantic relationships, personal fulfillment, like the, the thematically, I think it's yeah. actually trying to probe at whether or not it gets there with the sort of emptiness of the characters is another consideration or like, like you said, the archetypes, but yeah. um, I think it, it's kind of going after that stuff. So it's, it, it is an interesting uh, like touchdown. Whereas I think talk to me is a film that is, is really uh, it's a stand. The monkey's paw is a stand in for mm. um for drug use it's for getting high and and yeah. teen teen sort of uh pressure peer pressure around those things like i well anyway i said that better myself in my talk to me video on firm enough film so you can check well, that out and it's interesting <laughs> it did not cross my mind but <clears throat> it's but it's a fair comparison and point i think the the difference is that this is a one night event yeah right? that's is, true and so therefore it's not enough time to like drag out the addiction thematics and things like that like talking yeah. did so well where this, I mean, don't get me wrong, the addiction elements are here, but I think it it's only twice. Like the the, the body swap, like the 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 drug inducing yes. experience, it only happens twice. Yeah. And um, but again, but then it just it just goes off the rails from right. there. It does because it, it really and again, <clears throat> genre wise, like tropes, it, it really pokes and probes. Like again, a guy who's been at it and thinking about it and writing for long for many many years, waiting for his chance. He really just kind of like sub not subverted the tropes, but like really poked at them of like, what have we not seen before? Which again, like in the first half of the film, the first half an hour, I'm just like, oh man, this is if anything, this film's at risk of just being um a parody, like a just of just yeah. being a, a con- convolution of, of of influences. Right. But but thankfully, in my opinion, it 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 goes off in near original Definitely. territory. 
Yeah, it definitely gets original. I think that would be one of its greater assets for sure. So, I mean, I, I do want to talk about, I mean, we talk about the visual trappings. Like, I, I think the cinematography is worth its own at least yeah. mention. I mean, there are shots for days in this movie, man. Like, I it's so much so that production I... Production design. Yeah, yeah. I mean, when you were talking about the, the filmmakers, it reminds me, like, I, I thought of Tony Scott because there's so many neon yes. things and all that yes. sort of stuff. I mean, it's a totally different genre, but... I mean, yeah, you got long take oneers in several scenes. The camera just walks a circle around the group as they're conversing. You got split screens, like Brady Bunch style split screens, yeah. two people split screens, a yeah. lighting and, and individuals changing. Uh, what following shots, whirling cameras, um, really frenetic cutting at the at the onset to create the effect of like scrolling through social media. Yeah, uh, uh, I, I don't know. I got some others, man. I mean, again, it's a lot. Visually, it's a lot. And again, yeah. I wouldn't hold it against anyone who just it felt like too much. But, but again, in re in real time, as I'm watching it, because there is in the first like, um, is it? I don't know. I think maybe it's after the first time they do the body swap. But there, there is uh, an extended conversation with the whole group where the camera is just going around it. Yeah, Actually, yeah. Know, it might, it might be right when they. No, maybe it's earlier. Maybe it's right when they get to the house. Right, that's correct. There's just yeah. one memorable sequence where the camera is just going round yes. and round and round and round and round them, like, like almost dizzying for how yeah, long it's it is. happening. And and it's at that point in the film that I'm thinking like, this could easily become like the criticism could easily become this film is trying too hard. Yeah, because there's there's so many visual elements, but thankfully, in my experience, like it never, like I was making these mental notes, but I was never out of. It. I was only hooked, only ever hooked on what is happening, what's being said, because again, there's so much going on visually and and plot wise, that, and that was another comment that that um, that Sean Fancy in the big picture interviewing the filmmaker, Sean said, um, it, this was a film where I. I couldn't even be tempted to pick up my phone. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You, you ha like it's a film you have to pay attention. You, yeah. ca you, ha you can only be looking. Which again, <laughs> like it's this commentary on the sense of like we are in this era, this day where like they're producing films with the knowledge that people are distracted. Yeah, yeah, right? yeah. Which is so sad and so infuriating at times. Right. <laughs> but, but, but that's like for me the mark of a film that I love um, is a film where like because. The only time I'm tempted to pick up my phone during movies most of the time, like unless I'm bored, like the only time like in a good movie I'm tempted to pick up my phone is where I'm curious, like, oh, where where did that where's that person from? Like I'm just picking picking up the IMDB file yeah, and Google just trying to something. like locate who I know where right. or the right. filmmaker even. Right. But this but I love a film like this where like I can't even like I'm tempted mm. to pick up my phone because I'm curious to know the answer, but like I have to pay attention because I'm gonna miss something. Yeah, that's right, man. Well, and some of them are like, look, like, uh, yeah, I mean, it's a, there's a real kitchen sink approach to that. And even the sound design too. I mean, you got these needle drops and then it switches to like slow-mo and opera. I mean, it's, it's so it, like excess is definitely a word, but I think some of them are actually really effective. Like the, um, like the spotlighting and people lens on the one character, like that becomes a key plot point later on or the way that he uses that this cool, uh, it's a lighting effect. So it's like a black backdrop, red lighting, and it, yeah. it enables him to actually give you the real life people that are yeah. the minds inside the other bodies while they're doing it. So, because they're it, like you said about trying to piece it together, I, I pause several times because it's like, you're disoriented, man. It's like you're playing a game of Clue, but you're screwed because like mustards and marble and you're just trying to figure it out and like put it together. And uh, and honestly, I, I there's almost no other, <laughs> like. There's no almost no other comparison, but that that mental exercise made me recall watching Memento for the first time. Yeah, right, right, back, right. Back in high school, where I literally was pausing the VHS repeatedly yeah. to like map out the plot in my head. I'm like, am I following this? And yeah. that's very much what this film is. But again, visually, he he bends over back. The director bends over backwards to give you as many visual cues. As yeah, you, like you said, like the the the, the pigeonhole zoom, yeah, pigeonhole, and yeah. like the Polaroids on the chests and the the red lighting and like yeah, and which again, like to me, may, maybe for some people, it's it's all too much. But to me, it was like this is genius. Like this is so incredibly helpful because how else how else can you communicate this stuff? Right, exactly. Yeah, you would have been really and it would have been really interesting to try and do this in a different era. So um, I think, yeah, I think that hits. I just want to do kind of like a short pros and cons section. Sure. So I wanted to give you time to talk about anything 
you loved about the film that we didn't hit yet? I mean, I think we hit the sound design stuff, like maybe the performances or aspect, other aspects. And then, yes, I, I have to, uh, I am going to be taking the film to task on a couple of things that, you know, didn't sit as well with me, but I think it'll be good because we can have a back and forth about it. So. Well, I, I have been praising the film <clears throat> incessantly and right now, uh, 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 I, I can't think of another element that, um, uh, that I haven't already addressed. So I'm, I'm okay. happy to, I'm happy to go ahead and engage in the, in the, the critique. <laughs> okay. No, uh, well, here's the comment. Actually, here's, here's the setup because I, I said this to you off camera. Um, I mean, I, it's fun. A, a div, this is a divisive film. Apparently, right. apparently this is a divisive film <laughs> and we have been, we have both been so positive so far that I, that for some people, if they're listening or watching at this point, they'll be absolutely confused as to what what mm -hmm. film we're talking about, because um, <laughs> because because and now and mutually, like I don't understand them because some of the reviews and some of the ratings I've been looking at, like again, it's very divisive. There's there's a, a large group that are either positive or very positive. I think yeah. you and I land, and then there's a lo equally large group that is incredibly negative and, and critical of this film. I'm seeing a ton on letterbox seeing way too many one star, one and a half star, two star <laughs> ratings. And I'm reading their, their, their reflections. And I don't, I don't get it. I yeah. don't understand. They're talking about um, irritating characterization and like, yeah, all, so, like, like I, I'm like, I'm like, but like that again, bodies, bodies, but like, that's the point. Like that's, yeah, and, and yeah, there's yeah. only so much you can work with anyway. So just to say like, I do love, it is fun to talk about a divisive yeah. film, even though you and I know we're right and they're wrong. It's, it's like, it's <laughs> well, you're, still, it, you're it's definitely still further fun. than me. Yeah. You're definitely further than me on this one. I, I would say, yeah. So look, one critic said that this plays off the fears of millennial relationship angst. So I would say that's a very nice way of putting it <laughs> yeah. because, um, it just seems to sort of come with the territories of this move, these movies, like you just said, the blandness, the the sort of one noted stereotypicalness or the unlikability of the characters. And that, I mean, dude, in this movie, it is. <laughs> I mean, I wrote them down like Cyrus is a pansy who's afraid of long term commitment because he's still crushing on another girl. Shelby can't seem to love herself as much as her IG influencer friend. Nikki is as vapid as any online person you'd expect. Dennis is a druggie caught in arrested development, still living off his parents' money. Ruben is eyeing someone else the night before his wedding. I mean, these people suck, dude. Yes. Are, these people are terrible. And I think the expectation of the genre is that they have to be so that you can enjoy like their demise or their troubles. Yeah. But I don't think I actually believe that. I, I think if the characters were richer and not and more like full orbed, I, I wonder if I would end up like caring even more about the situations yeah. that they encountered. So like as a counterpoint, like Samara Weaving in Ready or Not, which is a film kind of like this that I love. One night, one location. Yeah, exactly. A mansion, gothic, all that stuff. She, you want her to win. You care yes. about her. Now, granted, yes. she's in a completely different situation, but I do think that it's um i do think that that's one of the thing kind of pissing people off is just like i hate all these people i don't care what happens to them they all suck yeah. and yeah. um i think it's fair uh but i don't think anyone is in a different movie than anyone else so right. i think that matters like i do think i will give the film that that's why i don't think the one and one and a half star stuff is fair at all because the craft is way too good on this movie to yes. think it's that bad and um, the actors are all—they're all giving it their all, man. That's <laughs> they're, and they I, have. And various... I'm excited. I'll say, like, I, I'm again. I, I don't actually see for for what the material is and the purpose it serves. I don't think any of the actors are bad. Um, no. And and I and if anything, I'm excited to watch it again because I think again, once the all the reveals by the get to the end, there's so there's so many nuances to their performances and what they were required to do. True. True. But even in watching it the first time, I was picking up on some of the cues. I'm like, oh, I actually do believe this person's in this person's body now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Even though I've only spent yeah. like a half an hour with them. And it's because, um, again, in like a Freaky Friday movie, it's completely different because it's just one to one. Right. And it's a lot of it's a lot of fun to watch that. This is eight people swapping mannerisms and things. And then there's a whole other element of twist that comes that, that, that again, demands you to go back and watch it. Um but uh, yeah, I don't know. I, I, I guess I, that this is the part I can't explain because 
none of that bothered me because yeah. yes, they're all despicable people. But I mean, there's so many great movies, and then and maybe this is where the, the Tarantino influence came in, right? Like, right. Like right. What, what movie of his doesn't have only despicable people? Like right. it's just like it's just it, it's it's. But yeah, so you you enjoy the demise, but at the same time, the movie would have to be something entirely different or two hours long in order to act, develop characters in a way that would attach greater emotional investment or empathy. And that's not the point here. Yeah. 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 I agree. Yeah. I mean, and I think also like in defense of my own critique for a second, although I will stand by it, I, you have to make them one note to signal visually to the, the people who's in who's else's bodies. So like Dennis has to talk right. a certain way and be a party yeah. animal. And then the other guy has, because otherwise like when they switch before they get into it, you know, you're trying to figure out <laughs> like, like what, <laughs> you know, yeah. if we, I'm just trying to think if that actually happened in real life, what would you, what would happen? And and how would you find these like touchstones? Like, yeah, certain phrases that the same person uses or nicknames for their significant other or whatever. But um, yeah. So, but I do think it's a, I do think it's a, a fair critique. I think a, a bigger one for me personally is I, well, a couple. Okay. To me, this all just a little bit becomes like a hat on a hat. <laughs> By the end, yeah. man. Like the last 20 minutes, the film just spins and spins and spins. And I think, I think that's his intention. I think that's, Jar Har as you say, Jardine, his yeah. intention as a director is to make it kind of gnarly. So like, I'll give him props for it. Uh, but I guess what bothered me more about that man was like, I didn't feel like any of the twists were truly shocking to me. It was more like, oh, they teased up this little part, part between Cyrus and Shelby, and then it came out. Or like they teased up that Ruman was really into Maya, and then that came out. And so mm -hmm. um, I was surprised by little things, but uh, yeah, I kind of saw yeah, that stuff No, coming. it's not – it, the twists – you're right. I mean, it, it, again, and, and that's where I can extend a little bit of sympathy for the different point of view, where the, it's not like the twists. There's one twist that completely re re reworks one entire performance at the very, very end. Yeah. But but the the the, the main spins or twists are just like layered. They're, they're, they're just going deeper. They, mm -hmm. they are adding hat on a hat. And, and so none of it's shocking. It, to me, it was just exciting. Mm -hmm. And that that was the difference for me. Yeah, that makes sense. That makes sense. All right. Well, my Zoom's telling me we only have like a few minutes left. Wrap so I guess here. we got to get to wrap it up. But okay. I guess I I just, if I'm going to get the final word, dude, I hated the epilogue. It. I hated the coda. I did yeah. not like it. I'm sorry. I, I think I've just seen too many movies like it or whatever. And I, I really liked where it actually ended before the coda. So right. I was like, damn it. But, uh, um, and I think that's fair because that's, that's the point where I, I definitely, I was like, I definitely don't understand everything that's going on. Right <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, but, but again, I had such a good time up to that point that I was like, I don't even care. Yeah, like, I I'm just, I'm just like, I'm, I'm, I'm just happy to revisit it and then see if I understand the coda better next yeah. time. Right, or and, like if, if it's almost like watch this again with the coda in mind and maybe it'll be cool, you know. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyway, all right, man. Uh, it's time. We've got <laughs> we've got two <laughs> minutes to give our final scores. I'm gonna let you give your own FOF rating. Out of five stars, do you are you yeah, ready I'm, for that? I, I, I'm 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 such a virgin at this. Like how how to do the <laughs> FOF rating because you, you, your rating system is so intricate. And if anything, as a friend and viewer, it just baffles me sometimes the nuance, the minutia of the four point seven versus the poor the four point three. I like I like clean numbers. Um, no, I, I say that in jest and love, but um, I mean, so on Letterbox, I gave this a four point five. Okay. And um, so I actually, I'm just excited to find out if it's going to go higher for me or lower. And in the sense of like, is this for me, is this a 4.7? Is this a four? I mean, the truth is again, recognizing all of the potential flaws, uh, it can't, I don't think it's going to go higher than 4.5. Yeah. Um, that's, that's my caveat, but, uh, so I'll just, I, I'll just leave it with my nice round number of, of the, the 4.5. Four five? Five? Okay. I'm going to go 3.3. .3. That's what I'm going with. That's painful, man. <laughs> that hurts. That hurts to hear. I, gotta, I really hope that you it's were acknowledging over, the craft, over acknowledging the plan, but you know, uh, here's my critiques. So a little bit more than lukewarm. Um, hey, that's a higher than I gave something else um, from that. I'm be, be reviewing on the channel this week. <laughs> so <Fair enough. laughs> we will see. But um, 
man, I guess we got to wrap this bad boy up. I just wanted to uh, say thanks so much, man, for, for coming along for the ride. It's been a blast. Me and Adam Klein talking about, what's this one called? It's What's Inside. He's Nick Furman, and this is Furman on Film. Stay firm, my friends. Thank <laughs> you.